The history of any place can only be told through the people who have lived there. The rich, famous, and powerful earn the headlines and the space in history books, but offer only the dimmest reflection of what life is really like in a community. The stories this oral history project is interested in are those of the people who lived in the neighborhoods, worked in the factories and stores, raised children, suffered hardship, and experienced joy. These stories are your stories. No life is too small, no storyteller too insignificant. We hope you will consider sharing your story. We want to hear about your family life, your parents, your school, your job, your neighborhood, your joys, and the disappointments. Everyone is unique, and everyone has a story to tell. We hope you'll share yours with us. The film you are about to see stars a familiar cast of characters, Ms. Geraldine Young, Mrs. Carolyn Caldwell, and Mrs. Dorothy Brightwell, are the first of what we hope will be many volunteers who will tell us about life in their hometown. The stories they tell represent just the beginning of a project that we hope will more fully and clearly reveal the history of our town. I was born in Mobile, Alabama Bones. in 1943. Um, we stayed there until I was about seven years old, and then we moved north to Cincinnati. And from Cincinnati, we moved to Mansfield, Ohio. When we came to Mansfield, we came on the Greyhound bus. Mm -hmm. My mother and six children, and the youngest was about six months. So we traveled all the way by Greyhound uh, to Cincinnati. I came here because uh, I had relatives here and they wanted me to come to work mm -hmm. here so I could go back to college in Georgia. Okay. Yes, I was born in Mansfield. Okay. Um, We're at? Yes. On Franklin Street. Franklin. I lived in the Oakenwall district, what they used to call the Watchworks. And then I lived on 2nd Street, and uh, my spent a lot of time in the flats, which is this area they call the flats. But uh, I grew up on Oakland Wall, which is the watch work. I went to school at Bushnell. You never heard of that one, have you? No, ma'am. That's over there on 4th Street where New Hope is now. Bushnell. Okay. That's the first school I went to, and I went to there, went there from the second grade, maybe about a year. And then they tore Bushnell down, and we went to West Fifth. When we moved farther, you know, on the north end, we went to Crevlin. You know, and then Crevlin was, it wasn't, it wasn't segregated when I was there. Now, my husband is five years older than me. When he went to Crevlin, it was segregated. They had to come in the back, in the back in the old park, you know. But I didn't have to do that. When I went to school, like five years later, it was it was okay, you know. He went to Crevlin, I went to Crevlin, my kids went to Crevlin, and starting on the grandkids went to Crevlin, you know, before they got the uh, middle school and and uh, you know, um, Fourth Street and Malabar and stuff. But we we all went we all went that school and it's all <laughs> really contained you know what I'm saying mm. that's where we went it wasn't things like not where they bus you all over it wasn't like we went what, where we could walk because they didn't have busing and stuff then we just went to school it was normal to us you know mm. and when we did go to uh, junior high school and they would start to give us give us bus passes. I don't know what you guys are doing. Now you probably drive, right? <laughs> but when we were going on, we had to ride the bus. And we, of course, being poor, they gave us bus passes, you know. But the bus would always go past us on our Bowman Street to the white part first. Mm -hmm. And then they come back. And of course, you know, when they got to us, we had to sit on the back. But you know, the back part of the bus was pretty good. That's where the heat was at the winter time. <laughs> so that wasn't bad either. That worked out pretty good. 
but that's just the way it was. I went to school at uh, Newman School and Hedges School, then went on to John Simpson Junior High and uh, graduated from Mansfield Senior High in 1949. And uh, I went to Mansfield Business College for a while. My further education was when I moved to Louisville, Kentucky. And that's where I got my degrees at in Louisville, Kentucky. I was, well, I was a police officer there. And I ended up uh, going to uh, University of Louisville and Eastern Kentucky to get some law enforcement degrees. And I'm a paralegal too from the University of Louisville. Uh, my first job was at uh, Mansfield General Hospital. And I was 20, I think. 20 years old when I started there, and we were making like $1.35 an hour. <laughs> and you know, to training and stuff, you had to go full time. But after full time, I only worked like two 16 hours a week, mm -hmm. which was considered as permanent part time. Mm -hmm. And that's what I worked there. And I worked there for almost 20 years. I worked as, as a waitress in a restaurant right here on Main Street. and. Uh, then I got hired in as an elevator operator back in 1945, um. making 20 cents an hour. <laughs> well, at that time you had operators that uh, elevators that you operate with the hand. Mm -hmm. You know, you had to level them up even with the floor and all of this that you had to do. It wasn't like it is now that you get on and punch a button. You had to level them up with the hand. Well, at that time, it was Farmers Bank. See, the, the names has changed up there so much at the Farmers Bank. Mm -hmm. Then it was Farmers Saving and Trust. Then it turned into Bank One, and now it's Chase Bank. So, a lot of different names for that bank. Because at that time, see, if you went to school and you was the oldest, you had to work. Mm -hmm. And so after school, a lot of times I was working, and I never worked. I worked in a at a doctor's. He was a dentist in the Walpark building. His name was Ort. And I went to his house after school and cleaned the house. And I don't remember doing that much, but I was there, so I had to do something. <laughs> Some of the girls actually left school and went down and read the elevator at night downtown. And I think my senior year, I did that. I ran the elevator in the Richland Trust building. They called it Richland Trust, then it's the Richland Bank now. Through the Civil Rights Movement, I was in Kentucky. And, you know, in some ways, places in the South were as bad as, as some places in Ohio. Mansfield was one of the most segregated places you could be. Mansfield, that's why our young people leave here. Mansfield, you know, when I came back here after so long, people said, like, how can you come back to Mansfield after living in Louisville? I said, it's home. But, the civil rights movement being marching and being called names and had songs thrown at you and, and when you're just doing what you as an American citizen should be able to do, uh, it's hard. It's hard. And I, you know, I don't wish it on young people. In a way, I wish they knew about sitting at the counter. I remember sitting, young people sitting at the counter at Neisner's in Louisville, in Louisville, Kentucky not being able to eat at Neisner's. And young people now take all this stuff for granted. It, it's, it's hard. It was hard. Mike Wentz was the director of the Friendly House, but one of the most segregated places in this city. Black and white kids went to school, the kindergarten together. When they got out of kindergarten, the gimbal split them. Because you had white clubs and we had black clubs. When Hidden Hollow Camp opened, black kids could not go to Hidden, Hidden Hollow Camp. Could not go to it. Because I remember I was just so disappointed. They were just so enthusiastic about Hidden Hollow going to have a camping. And black kids couldn't go to Hidden Hollow Camp. Could not go to it. But the Friendly House was one of the most segregated places in Mansfield. Just like the parks were. 
but the Friendly House was the kids grew up together. You know, they had that picture that's known all the United States with the uh, Bobby Ross and all sitting on the curb. Mm. That isn't how the Friendly House was. They were together like that till they went to school. When they went to school, like I remember my kindergarten class, we were all together. After you went, got out of kindergarten, went to first grade, the black and white kids were separated. When I got to senior high, like in the uh, ninth or tenth grade, you know, some of the teachers had the tendency that, I'm not up to being truthful, <laughs> the white kids would come in and they would choose their seats. And this so happened in one of the classes, I chose a seat up in the front. Mm -hmm. And on one day, one of the white kids came in and she made me move so he could have that seat. So when the class was over, I'm, I'm not afraid to step up when you write. Mm -hmm. I told the teacher, I said, I'm not moving anymore. I'm not moving anymore because if I'm here first, then I deserve to sit here. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've always sort of like stood up for myself, you know, not being, I mean, I didn't really care if she took me to the office. <laughs> it wasn't a big thing, you know. But sometimes, you know, you have to stand up when you see things like that being done to you. Mm -hmm. I just know there was certain things we could do and certain things we couldn't do. You know, we, from what my husband can tell you a lot, but he didn't come. But anyway, you know, there was, he used to work at a bowling alley up on 4th Street. You don't remember that either, probably. But they had a lot of lanes up there. And he used to work, they used to, him and some of his buddies, school buddies, used to go up there and set pens. You know, they didn't have an automatic pens like they have now. And they used to go and set pens, and sometimes they wouldn't get out maybe till. 9 30 10 o'clock at night and this was after they had been to school mm -hmm. and then they went up there and they would have to walk home the bowling alley on fourth street he lived way out on lily street where we live now mm -hmm. okay they had to walk down this hill down this hill and the police would follow them from the time they left the bowling alley to the time they got home you know to make sure they just went home you know and didn't go in no other part but they used to do that. They used to follow them like that. Black people could not swim in Mansfield, in any park. Um, uh, like Liberty Park was more or less was built by was built by German, the German people that lived in out that had that built, and black people helped build it. Mm -hmm. But they could not swim in the park. They could not swim in the pool. Now, in the winter, we could ice skate together because it was problem, you know, ski down the hill together, but we could not swim in the pool. And uh, now the city recreation had, uh, in the summer, had things out there, the arts and crafts and things. Uh, you could join in at that park, at uh, Liberty Park. I remember the picnics. There were big picnics at North Lake Park, but the black people had to have their own picnics. They could not go to the picnics that other people had. And uh, the parks were very segregated. Like we danced at Friendly House on Wednesday, Wednesday night. On and you roller skated on Monday night. Mm -hmm. You had your time that you had to be there. On At the movie, you had a certain place you sat at the movies. Mm -hmm. The Ritz Theater, you knew you sat on the right side. You knew, you knew where you had to sit. You knew where you had to sit at the movies. Mm -hmm. There used to be, I think, three grocery stores. There used to be some uh, ho not ho hotels, well, hot room and houses, you know. And you know, of course, between Crystal Spring and I'll say Fern Avenue, I know there are about at least six bars. I think the grocery store started about um, Crestline Avenue, that's where the steel mill started. Crestline Avenue had one. There was a, what we call a big grocery store on the corner of Bowman and Longview. On past there, there was one called Marshall's. Um, and up by Crevin School or MOIC, there was a big drug store yeah. and grocery store right there on that corner. There were, well, on both sides of the street, there were businesses. Like, um, on the corner was a car 
corner down there was a car dealership. And then there was Bagley, the Bagley building, and the Bisman building. And there was a meat market right up here between the Bagley building and um, the Bisman building. There was a butcher shop. No, around in this area. It was around. No, it was a butcher shop. Then across the street on the corner of 6th, there was a shoe shop. Remember the shoe shop? Mm-hmm. And before you got the Tucker, you know, a past Tucker's furniture store. Yeah. Uh-huh, there was a shoe shop. And then there was a business uh, that sold beauty supplies. You know where the chocolate bar was? You know, on one yeah. side, it was a, a business sold beauty supply. Then there was an alley. Mm -hmm. And I can think it was on the other side of that alley. Yeah. And then there was, well, always had to have the pool rooms, you know. Yeah. The pool rooms. <laughs> and I'm trying to think what was there. The red and white grocery store was down this way. Mm -hmm. And there was another pool room, there was two pool rooms. And the, there's a bakery down in that, there's an alley right now. And we used to get, on our, on our trek to school, we stopped there and get big donuts for a penny. A penny, a big donut, a round. And I guess he sold all the stale donuts to us on the way to school. <laughs> but they were good. <laughs> but early in the morning, you walked that far. By the time you got down here, and you got that donut for a penny, and it took you all the way to school. Litzler's, was that the name of that bakery? Litzler's. I believe the name was Litzler's. And uh, then the green leaf was on the corner. Mm -hmm. It was there when I was a little child. Mayor's Drug Store, and there was another bar on the other side of Main Street. I can't think of the name of that. No, these, these are all white bars. Black people weren't allowed in them bars then. Them two. Then. Not then. Because the Green Leaf was on one corner, the car dealership was on one corner, Mayor's Drug Store was on one corner, and another bar, a nightclub was on the other corner. Then you're going down toward the Friendly House. Um, the Volunteers of America was down that way, but not where it is now. There was a big house down there that was the Volunteers of America before you got to the Friendly House. The Friendly House was on that alley. Mount Calvary was on the hill then. Mm -hmm. It wasn't laid out like it is now. It was up on the hill. That's where, at 11 years old, I was baptized, you know. And we were all involved in, in things like the uh, the Guild, which was for younger people like when we got to be about 11, 12, 13. And they were, you know, teachers put us in a choir and, you know, teach us different, different things concerning church. Our socialization at the time was church. There was three black churches in Manchester when I came up. So Sunday you didn't go to the movie, you wasn't on TV, you went churching. Which one? Anyone that's having a good program. Oh, you went to your church first. Mm -hmm. Then on Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, you went to, as you got older, you went where the nice looking boys was. And <laughs> as you got older, but when you were younger, you went where the best singing was. Everybody was involved in church, everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you started going to church and sitting there and being quiet, unless now your mother turned around and give you the look. You know what the look is. Yeah, you you know what the look is. Yeah, I know you know <laughs> what the look <laughs> is. Uh, you went to church. And as you got older, you went to, I say you went to church for the good singing or what the cute boys were, but you went to church. And I, right now, if I don't go to church, something's wrong. It's just part of me going to church. It's, it's, or, in black society, that was our socialization. That's all we had, you know? Mm -hmm. When we were slaves, we had to go down in the woods. Mm -hmm. But we had church. We always had church. And that's something that the black community will always have this church because that's our bond. As each generation you say, oh, they're going to the dogs, they're not going to church, but there are people going to church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Every Sunday, people go to church, say, oh yeah, I went to church. That was part of me. So the black church has been the catalyst because that's all we have. 
even on the plantations back as far as plantation, that's all we had was church. And as went by, even up to the depression, didn't have any money, ain't it? Church. church. We always had church. And that's what Mansfield basis of the black community was church. There was three churches, Mount Calvary, Mount Hermon, and Mitchell Chapel. And everybody went to one of those churches. And you went to everybody's church, though. Yeah. On Sunday, you, we called, we went churching. And you went to church, and you walked. I walked from Shiloh to Mount Hermon a many a Sunday. I hope that more seniors will sit and talk about some of these things, because mm -hmm. the three of us cannot remember everything. everything. Mm -hmm. But That's I true. hope that uh, some people will sit and talk about these things and uh, feel comfortable, because mm -hmm. I have felt comfortable sitting up here doing this. And I think the idea of them feeling comfortable talking uh, to you all about this stuff was well, not stuff because it's, it's history. It's what happened here in Mansfield. That's right. But I hope they'll feel more comfortable sitting down and and talking, especially with the young people, letting the young people know oh, what so happened here in Mansfield. You know that uh, it was so viable. You know, so many things happened here. As I say, the night I lay at home and think, oh, I forgot to say, Dorothy. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> but maybe someone so else will elaborate remember, upon yeah. that. You know, which we forgot or didn't say. Mm -hmm and give them opportunity to especially uh, people not only like me, I didn't live in the North End, but I was in the North End all the time. I say we was all over town. But I hope people will be more comfortable to sit down and say, oh, I can do that too, because this idea of telling what happened to you and how you lived in Mansfield when you were young. And, and it's sort of like passing history on mm -hmm. what we yeah. did orally. We didn't have hotels or boats and we don't did come over the Nanda, the Penta. We don't have that kind of history. But we have oral history that That's we right. need to share. Mm -hmm. And I think when you talk to people, they'll see that they're part of this history and maybe mm -hmm. there's something they might wanna you know add to it.